Nick Gallo, Casey Thunder. Uh, Josh, you seemed pretty heavily involved in just some of the disrupt disruptiveness defensively early. Uh, what did you notice as kind of some keys on that end of the floor that you were able to sustain for such a long time tonight? Yeah, I thought we were good um, from the jump on that end. Um, the games like that are, are, are tough to play in when a team, they're not really playing for anything. They're loose. They're, they're free. Guys are playing confidently. Um, th those type of games are difficult to play in. And um, I thought from the jump, we, we came out with the right mindset, um, not worrying you know, who the opponent was, um, executed the game plan defensively. I thought we locked in. They, we held them to 11 in the first quarter. Uh, we, we got out in transition. We started. You know, we, we were getting whatever we wanted offensively, I thought. Uh, the way we executed defensively, to start that game, you know, put it to bed early, and that's that's kind of the way it's got to be. And um, I thought, guys, one through five, we were switching, we were active, we're in the lane, we're disruptive. Uh, we we look great on that end. Gordon, you were part of one of those plays that seems kind of just like a perfect possession. Ball hits everybody's hands, and, and you get the baseline drive. What does that feel like in that moment when you're out there on the floor and, and you're able to create a flow as a five-man unit like that? Yeah, um, I thought we really shared the ball well tonight. Uh, certainly, that was, I think, my first touch, too. So to get a layup to get yourself going is is, is really good. Um, the game's easy when, when we're playing like that. I think we have a lot of weapons out there. So if we space correctly and cut correctly and move the ball, it's, it's tough to defend. Gordon, over the course of your career, you played for some very intelligent, high-level coaches, Quinn Snyder, Brad Stevens. Just, I know it's only been like 25-plus games, but what have you seen from Mark so far? Yeah, I mean, he's he is. Um, you know, right there with those guys as far as the way he thinks the game. Um, you can tell he's he's a hard worker and puts a lot into it. Um, and so I think he's uh, doing a great job. It hasn't, like you said, it hasn't been too many games, but just you can get that same sense of um, what he does. Some of his, like, adjustments, too, in the game um, or uh, in between games, like on, on practice days, we'll come in and he'll talk about different things. And I'll sit there and think to myself, like, that's actually, like, really smart. Um, and really helpful uh, for us as a team. So, um, you know, certainly he's he's doing a great job. And what's sort of the challenge? I know you're coming in off a trade, off an injury, to a team that's playing at a really high level and humming. How do you sort of like balance trying to get your feet under you, but not sort of disturbing, I guess, what's going on? Yeah, it's been a difficult adjustment for sure, um, just because of what you mentioned. Um, you know, these guys were rolling long before I got here. Um, you know, also I was out for probably two months. With it, with a pretty serious calf injury, so trying to find my rhythm, find myself back from that, and also in, integrate into the team and um, find my spots of, of where you know I can be aggressive and um, where I can help us. Um, but so I think it's kind of been an ongoing process, still still working through that. Josh, I think it's you. you we talk about your confidence is there. Are when you go into a game, are you saying this is what I'm doing, or this is what this team has given up? That I can do to them. The, the second one. I mean, the, the the problem early in the year for me was was the first one. I, I kind of went in predetermined to do something, and um, I thought that's what was hurting me. And um, you know, going in with a, a pre plan is, is not the way to do it because defenses throw different looks at you. You know, I've seen different coverages. You know, with a big guard in me, a guard guarding me. So, um, you know, not going in w with a plan. I guess just taking what the defense gives me, whether that's score, rebound, push the ball in transition, get other guys' looks. Um, Taking as the game comes and playing every you know, kind of possession on its own. Um, I thought early in the year I um, sometimes would, you know, plan, not plan ahead, but um, already have this idea of what I was going to do coming into the game. Uh, but now I've kind of just relaxed and, you know, let the game come to me and um, take each possession as it comes. Well, you kind of hit on this. It, like, do you step into a three tonight, look like you didn't hesitate? Yeah. You, you drove hard one time. Well, just where's your game after being here for? What, a month and a half, two months, wherever. It yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's a work in progress. Um, I mean, I think uh, the hardest thing for me was trying to figure out where I could fit in. Um, and, you know, that's, like I said, that's an ongoing thing. And um, tonight, especially, as I mentioned, getting, being able to drive and get a layup to get yourself going, um, get yourself kind of in a sweat and able to kind of have some rhythm is, is important, uh, especially for me at this point in time in my career. It's a lot harder for me to just go in there and, and get after it right away. So to, the fact that I could get a layup to get going was, was good and got to the free throw line a little bit and all that all those things help. So it, it ultimately it's a work in progress. Yeah, just just to follow up on that, you, you haven't had double digit shot attempts yet in OKC. You did a majority of the time this season with Charlotte. Is part of that just like figuring out like how do I play a smaller role? Yeah. Yeah, I mean I'm it's um 
a little bit what Josh just alluded to. I mean, it's it's kind of taking what the defense gives you and um, the role that I've been in. It's um, trying to be aggressive when I get it, but um, I think I got to control what I can control, and that's how I play when I'm out there on the court and the opportunities I'm given. And so just uh, continuing to try to have an attacking mindset, but if it's it's open, definitely take it and shoot it. And then you missed a game. How are you feeling physically? Yeah, the, the calf feels uh, obviously better. I was able to go out there and play today. I uh, wanted to see how it was before the game, um, something that we're certainly going to keep an eye on because it's the same calf that I injured, but I uh, felt pretty good today. Josh, you mentioned letting the game come to you just on a night like tonight where you get 11 in the first quarter. Just how much does that really kind of free you up, loosen you up for the rest of the game? I mean, yeah, it feels good. I mean, anytime you get going early, um, it gives any play confidence. Um, going forward uh, in the game and um, you know I got a couple easy ones early got to the free throw line a little bit and that kind of gets your rhythm going and um, as I said just just taking what was what was there and um, tried to get in transition tried to run I think we sparked that from our defense so um, you know I tried to get out guys were kicking the ball ahead we were moving it unselfishly and I just happened to you know be on the end of it but um, you know it is good for any player to get going early um, see a few easy ones go down and that gets your confidence going. Josh, on this recent road trip, a lot of you guys were asked to do a little bit more with Shea and Dub out. I wanted to ask about Jay Will in particular as a pass to yourself. What have you seen from him just as a secondary facilitator in some of those second units? Yeah, he's great um, in that role, and I think um, he's very underrated as a you know ball distributor. The way he gets guys open looks. Like, you know, in that Philly game, he had nine assists at the, at the half, and that kind of just speaks to uh, when we played through him at that you know in the elbow in the top of the key. Um, guys know to cut to, to move off the ball because he's going to look for you and he's going to get you you know open looks and um, he's done a great job you know especially with those bigger centers he, he does a great job being physical with them rebounding boxing out so all the little things you know that his game doesn't always show up on the box score I think um, that's such a you know weapon to have uh, for our team um, and he, he does all the dirty things and the little things and um, it is a big piece you know to what we're doing. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Josh, today the Australia Olympic squad was announced and your name was head headline the list. How excited are you to play in the Olympic Games this summer? Very. Um, you know, as a kid, I, I grew up watching them and have dreamt of playing in the Olympic Games, you know, or World Cup, which is representing my country um, for, for a long, long time. And um, to have the opportunity now to, to be able to go to Paris this summer, uh, represent our country. Um, it, it's special and um, especially particularly in Australia every kid that plays the sport growing up um, that's the, the highest honor you know to put on the green and gold to represent your country um, and, and I can't wait to do it I think the talent we've got down there is as good as it's ever been um, you know multiple NBA you know 10 11 12 NBA guys um, so it's a really good squad to pick from and um, a lot of tough decisions have to be made but um, it's a great problem to have and I think Australian basketball you know is as good as it's ever been Josh you had a slower uh, stretch of games in your second season this season too you've alluded to a slow stretch but you you broke through twice does it feel similar at all to you do you feel like you've pushed through this time too yeah um i mean any any player goes through it um i think when you're in the midst of it it's hard to see the light at the end of it um it you know you think it's never going to end and it's just going to keep dragging on but um just continuing to, to put in the work um i think that's the big thing it um it always comes to light eventually and um, you know, I went through it in my, my second year um, with, a, with a stretch of, you know, games where you, you lose confidence, you start to doubt yourself. But um, all you need is, you know, one good game and, and two games and the, kind of like a snowball effect. And um, I've just tried to stick with it as best I can. Um, you know, there's ups and downs, but um, just, you know, you can't ride the wave too much. Otherwise, your emotions, you know, go all over the place. So um, I've tried to stay, you know, level-headed through everything, through good games, bad games, um, okay games. So it's going to happen through any player's career. And, um, you know, I'm 21 years old, so these days, are, you know, I'm not isolated in this, and um, I've just tried to stick with it, you know, as best I can. Cal, OKC Thunder, uh, Adam, your, your first NBA points. Um, just tell me about how that felt out there, uh, getting mobbed by your teammates afterwards, and then um, anything special that you can share from uh, the guys celebrating you. Uh, it was honestly a one-of-a-kind experience, and uh, shout out to Lou for stopping, making sure everybody uh, gave me the ball. Um, I gave it up. I was like, "Don't give up the ball! Don't give up the ball!" So, um, you know, it just shows how great of teammates we have, and I'm just glad to be a part of this organization. So, and then, can you tell me about the travel that you had? Not just you know coming back today from Portland in the middle of this G League Finals, but I mean. It, your last week has been pretty crazy. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been tough, um, but we've had the opportunity to play in advance, and uh, we couldn't. 
big dog. All right. Uh, hey, this guy, guy. But um, there's uh, nothing more we can ask for. We're in the finals, and, um, you know, we worked our butt off to get to this point, and everybody has the same agenda of, of finishing these last two games. So it doesn't matter whatever it takes. Yes. So for the Blue won like 12 of your last 14 games in the regular season. Have had this great run here. What's been key for you all that um, is maybe sort of something that you've recognized within the, the entire organization? I think we have done a, a lot better job of just resembling the Thunder. Uh, you know, they joke about on Twitter how it's like an AAU team. And uh, we feel that we have that same type of camaraderie, you know, with the blue. And it was funny because we were looking at each other like, when did this become an AU team? You know, once we started realizing how much fun it was to be around each other and just be selfless out there and win, that's when, you know, the wins started to stack up. And uh, before we knew it, we were uh, having an opportunity to play here. So, Adam, you, you kind of had a, a journey that's not dissimilar to other guys on the team. You know, you go to Presbyterian to – to Baylor, undrafted, G League, and now you've played NBA game. There's other guys that have similar stories like Kendrick Williams and even Lou Dort who went undrafted and is now playing a big role. Does that, like, just knowing that those stories exist on this roster, does that, like, give you more motivation or have you, like, really kind of tapped into those guys' experience? Uh, definitely. You know, everybody from top to bottom has uh, poured into me. Uh, I was talking to Kim Rich on the bench, just asking him, you know, how his experience has been, you know, thus far. And uh, from the minute he got to uh, the Thunder with the G League to moving up, you know, he's been uh, really an advocate for me and just really helping me. And uh, Waco, obviously, Baylor, um, he's from Waco. So we've known each other for a minute now. So it's, it's good to have like a big brother, you know, with this organization here. Same kind of question about Mark because he was the blue coach for a long time. Does it does it kind of help having a head coach of the team that's so tied into the blue? Yeah, definitely. Having a tight knit you know organization and having somebody like Mark who is just a, a humble, well rounded guy. You know, and being able to learn from him, I've been uh, honored to just be here and uh, be able to just pick his brain. And I'm super excited for whatever the future holds. Nick Allo, KC Thunder. Uh, Mark, you know, it's one thing to kind of jump on a, a shorthanded team early, but um, what did you see from just your professionalism tonight to not allow this thing to get closer for them to really make a run uh, at all on the second half? Yeah, I thought we were, uh, you know, businesslike and serious to start the game, both ends of the floor, um, and really sustained it throughout. I thought we did a nice job tonight uh, playing the way that we want to play and, and stacking those possessions regardless of the scoreboard. So give the guys a lot of credit. And then uh, you just continue to get these possessions that at least feel like perfect possessions. All five guys touch it. You get these straight line drives. Um, how have you seen this group, as you look over the last couple of years, continue to make those more frequent? Um, I mean, it starts with an initial advantage and then uh, moving it quickly out of there and then maintaining the advantage. And, um, you know, we've, for as many possessions as we have like that, we'll take a possession you know, on ball pace and we get downhill and there's no passes, but we get a clean layup because of the, the floor movement and the pace of the play. So uh, we want to be a threat to attack at the beginning of the possession. And if the defense stops it, then there should be an advantage somewhere else. And we have to find that advantage. Following up on some of those possessions where the ball's really swinging around, how much is that schematic and how much is that just the guy's ability in passing the ball? Um, I mean, so like I just said, you know, you're trying to create an advantage and then just move it out of the advantage and then maintain the advantage or finish the play. And so sometimes you get an advantage and you get a shot right off of it. Sometimes you have to work the possession a little bit more to find the advantage. Sometimes, you know, the defense does a good job of rotating. A lot of those possessions is because the defense forces you to make the extra play. Uh, and then you read the game, and the guys have done a great job of that. How do you sort of balance going into the playoffs of just you have some guys coming off injuries but also there's still something to play for seating-wise of just kind of either a dress rehearsal sort of for these games but also getting guys out early so they can be rested. Um, I mean, we're going to prioritize health above everything, um, not necessarily rest, but health for sure. Um, so if there's any ailment or anything like that, we're going to take care of that as we've done, you know, be conservative with it. Uh, and then regardless of, you know, who's out there, you know, who we're playing, we need to build habits, and, you know, it's really about that. Um, and then let the chips fall where they may. But we're not going to, you know, white knuckle the last week of the season uh, and watch the standings because we haven't done that all year. We've just really focused on being the best team we can be, and that's what we'll continue to do all the way through the 82. Yeah, 
Uh, Shea's in his second game back. Just what have you seen from him? Good pop. You know, I thought he had a good balance tonight of his attacks and also, you know, made some really, really good plays moving it out of there. You know, I, I mentioned coming off the road, but it, it held true again tonight. I think, you know, losing those guys, I think everybody thinks about offense, but, you know, those guys are both plus defenders that have really helped us on that end of the floor. Um, and it gives us the depth. You know, it, it bolsters our depth again. Um, and I think they've helped us, as, you know, defensively as much as they have offensively. Hayward did a good job at scoring the ball. What did you think of his performance tonight? A good aggression. You know, he was really aggressive and you know on the gas. Um, played with a lot of confidence right from when he got in the game. You know, I give him a lot of credit uh, for that. Um, it was a good night for him. I thought he was really, really good, especially with the way he started. He went into the game with a um, with a really, really aggressive approach. It was good to see. What do you think of Jalen? Dubber. J there's two. J Dub. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Good. You know, he's he's um, coming off the ankle, so he's working back as well. But it gives us a two end presence. Um, plays the right way always. You know, on the offensive end, I give him a lot of credit for that. He doesn't play his his stats or anything like that. Um, you know, so same thing, working him back in, and it's good to get the depth uh, back and get the defense going the way that he has. You know, and, and for the team. Looks like Gordon kind of was aggressive a couple times. Stepped into a three, then he drove it pretty good for you. What do you think of this game? Balance, like I just said, you know, he was aggressive to start the game with the ball in his hands, but found good threes. We found him, you know, in those spacing situations. Um, I thought he played really well, really encouraging. Josh just physically looks so much more confident. How much do you attribute that to his approach, or is it kind of more of the him figuring out the cross matching? I know it's kind of a chicken and egg thing, but. Well, he hasn't gotten cross matched a lot lately, you know, and so the thing that's challenging about that or that was um, is it kind of requires a different skill set just with the way you're getting guarded. Um, you know, he's had guards on him for a good stretch now and has done a nice job. Um, and when he's gotten cross matched, it's felt less uh, loud because, our, you know, the team, it's not even just his approach to it, it's the team's approach to it. We've figured it out um, to a degree, you know, at least how we want to attack it and how we want to play against it. So, uh, we've built that muscle, and uh, I think the fact that teams are reverting back to more traditional matchups is a signal that um, you know we've we've tilted the cost benefit on that a little bit for our opponents. Anybody else? Hey, yeah, real, yeah go know. ahead. Chats minutes and like what? The fifteen minutes is you know what was the reason for just opportunity minutes? to get him off, peel him off there, get him some rest, get him off his feet. I mean, he's you know we rested Dort tonight. Yeah. You know, a lot of those guys, this is, I don't know how many games we've played and how many days and how many cities, but we're still kind of in that. This was a back-to-back, -back, so we're trying to be cognizant of that while also, you know, keeping the guys playing and sharp, you know, and doing that. But that was that what that was. Uh, Mark, you know, Adam Flagler, I think, was playing in Portland, Maine last night and gets in and is probably going to play tomorrow. Just uh, your thoughts on um, him getting his first NBA bucket. Yeah, hap the guys are happy for him, um, and I'm happy for him. He's a really, really good guy. That was he got hurt uh, in the pre-draft or before the pre-draft. I don't know what the timing was, but uh, that's hard when you're trying to like make your way uh, in the NBA. And the first, you know, thing you do is have to rehab. You know, if you're in that situation, and uh, he was very diligent with it. Um, got himself back. You know, that's a huge accomplishment to get himself back on the floor. So happy for him and have been very impressed with his approach and professionalism for a young player. Um, he just is, is rock solid as a guy. Uh, and a good opportunity to say, you know, the blue play tomorrow night here um, at 7 o'clock, I believe, you know, and a message to our fans, you know, if you have nothing going on tomorrow night and can make it out, we could certainly use the support uh, as the blue come down the stretch, this will be their last home game regardless of outcome.